Article 21 is nothing but right to life. Under this right to life, right to information is also a fundamental right. So right to information act came into force from October 12, 2005. Even though the act was enacted on June 15, 2005, RTI came into force from October 12, 2005. So RTI is a fundamental right of every citizen in this country. So it is the duty of the concerned public information officer to provide information to the RTI applicant within the specified period of time, which is specified under the Right to Information Act. So the Right to Information Act is now applicable to whole country earlier Jammu and Kashmir, we were having a separate Right to Information Act which came into force in Jammu and Kashmir in 2009. So now with the scrap of this Article 370, uh, the Right to Information Act is now applicable to whole country. Earlier, we used to have a Freedom of Information Act of 2002. So the Right to Information Act of 2005 replaces the earlier Freedom of Information Act of 2000. Two. Earlier information disclosure was restricted by various laws including the Official Secrets Act of 1923. The act was enacted to provide uh, access to the information which is under the control of public authorities for every citizen in this country. What about the organizations which fall under the Right to Information Act? So all the uh, constitutional institutions that included executive, judiciary, and uh, legislature, all those institutions which are uh, constituted based on the act of parliament, based on the act of state legislature, etc. And along with that, the organizations which are established directly or indirectly owned by, owned, uh, controlled and managed by the government etc those are fall under the right to information act along with that the organizations or institutions ngos which substantially funded by the government and private organizations are not under the purview of right to information act and uh, in any case the central information commission which said that the national uh, political parties are discharging the fu public functions and they can fall under the Right to Information Act. But there was a bill which was pending uh, in 2013, but at present, no political party is under the purview of Right to Information Act. Then the major objective of Right to Information Act is to empower the citizens of this country to right to access to information which is under the control of public authorities and to promote transparency and accountability among the working of the public authorities etc the right to information act was enacted in 2005 if you see uh, the right to information act there are two major uh, uh, bodies the central information commission along with that there is a state information commission in each state we have those are the two bodies which are responsible for providing information to the rta applicant if you see the right to information act which uh, says that each authority or each organization should appoint their own public information officers to disclose information to the rta applicant for example if you see uh, Osmania university the registrar is the person who is in, uh, appointed as a public information officer by the university and he is responsible for providing information to the RTI applicant. So the Central Information Commission which is responsible for providing information about the central department, central uh, government etc. And if you see the state, generally the information should be provided about the state and the departments etc. Is responsible organization is the state information commission so the central information commission functions and the state information commission functions or objectives are same
the central information commission is headed by a uh, central chief information commissioner see along with him there are not more than uh, 10 information commissioners for providing information to the rta applicants then if you see the state information commission the state uh, information commission is headed by the chief state information commissioner along with that there are not more than 10 state information commissioners so this central information commission and state information commission both are uh, the bodies which are responsible for providing information to the rta applicants on the when they receive appeals from the rta applicants so the central information commission is headed by the Central Chief Information Commissioner and along with him there are not more than 10 information commissioners, Central Information Commissioner. Chief Central Information Commissioner along with him the Central Information Commissioners of the uh, Central Information Commission are appointed by the President of India on the recommendation of a committee which consists of the prime minister leader of opposition in lok sabha and a union cabinet minister who is nominated by the prime minister of india so these are the three members committee which is recommending names for the positions of the chief information commissioner and uh, central Information Commissioner positions and based on these recommendations, the President of India will appoint the Chief Information Commissioner and uh, Information Commissioners of the Central Information Commission. The Central Chief Information Commissioner and the 10 Information Commissioners of the Central Information Commission who hold office for a term of five years or until they attain the age of 65 years. The Chief Information Commissioner and the Central Information Commissioners are the persons who are having knowledge or practical experience in different fields, which includes law, science and technology, management, journalism, and administration. One more important aspect is uh, the Central uh, Chief Information Commissioner or Information Commissioners should not be a member of Parliament. They should not be a member of any state legislature. They should not hold any uh, office for a full time. Uh, so with uh, effect from this 2019 uh, RTA Amendment Act, the Chief Information Commissioner and Information Commissioners of the Central Information Commissioners will hold office for a term of five years or till they attain the age of 65 years. And if you see the Chief Information Commissioners of the Central Information Commission, he should not be reappointed as a Central Chief Information Commissioner. Then if you see the information commissioners, information commissioner may, uh, may be appointed uh, as a central chief information commissioner, but in aggregate, the central information commissioner should not hold the office in aggregate, not more than five years of time. Central chief information commissioner and the information commissioners of central information commission they can be suspended from office by the order of the president. Along with that, if you see the Central Chief Information Commissioner and the Information Commissioners of the Central Information Commission may be removed by the president of India by order. Then uh, Central Chief Information Commissioner or the information commissioners of the Central Information Commission may writing a letter addressed to the President of India, they may resign from their office. 
So the term of the Central Chief Information Commissioner and Information Commissioners is five years or till they attain 65 years of age. A Chief Information Commissioner cannot be reappointed as a Chief Central Information Commissioner, but the Central Information Commissioners may be appointed as the Chief Information Commissioner but in aggregate it should not hold office not more than five years of term so the president by his uh, order can remove the chief central information commissioner or the information commissioners of central information commission along with that the president may suspend the chief central information commissioner along with that the information Commissioners. Then, if you see the State uh, Information Commission, if you see the Telangana State Information Commission, but after the formation of Telangana State, the Telangana State Government constituted Telangana State Information Commission on September 17, 2017. If you see the State uh, Information Commission, the same way uh, as the Central uh, Chief Information Commission, the State Information Commission, Telangana State Information Commission or any other State Information Commission, which is headed by the State Chief Information Commissioner. Along with him, there are not more than 10 Information Commissioners in the State Information Commission. The State Chief Information Commissioner and Information Commissioners are to be appointed by the Governor of the Concern State. Uh, the Chief Information Commissioner of the State along with that uh, State Information Commissioners are to be appointed by the Governor of the State based on the recommendation of a committee which consists of the Chief Minister, Leader of opposition in state legislature along with that a state cabinet minister who is nominated by the chief minister of the concern state so this uh, nominating panel is headed by the chief minister who is acting as the chairperson of this committee so this committee is the one which is recommending names for the positions of chief information commissioner and the information commissioners to the governor and governor is the one who is appointing the chief state chief information commissioner along with the information commissioners of the concerned state information commission then if you see a term of the state information commissioners and the state chief information commissioner so the state chief information commissioner and the information commissioners will hold office for a term of five years or till they attain the age of 65 years the state chief information commissioner will not be appointed as the state chief information commissioner but the information commissioners of the uh, state information commission may be appointed as the state chief information commissioner but in aggregate the state information commissioners should not hold office not more than a period of five years term in aggregate the chief information commissioner of the state information commission the state information commissioners may by writing to the governor of the state may resign from their office and the governor by order may remove the state chief information commissioner and the state information commissioners if you see the process of the right to information act generally the right to information, the process begins with making an application for seeking information from the public authority of a concerned organization and it ends with providing timely information to the 
RTI applicant. Generally, it is 30 days. So here, if you want to make RTI request, generally the RTI applicant by writing a letter to the concerned public information officer of the concerned organization can seek information and along with the letter he has to attach a DD of 10 rupees uh, which is payable to the accounts officer of the concerned organization or a postal order in the name of accounts officer of the concerned organization. Uh, so the application has to be made along with the DD or the postal order and you can make a RTI application with the concerned organization. After receiving the RTI application from the concerned applicant, it is the duty of the concerned public information officer of the concerned organization to provide information to the RTI applicant. And if the RTI application, whatever he received, if it is not relevant or if it is not concerned to the organization, generally it is the duty of the concerned public information officer to transfer the RTA application to the concerned parties. And the same has to be communicated to the RTA applicant. Then application fees is uh, generally a 10 rupees demand draft or a postal order should be attached with the RTA application to request for information from the public authorities by an applicant. After receiving the RTA application by the concerned public information officer, within 30 days from the date of receipt of application, the concerned PIO has to provide information to the RTA applicant. Second thing is, in the absence of the public information officer, if an uh, assistant public information officer, if he or she receives RTI request from an applicant, in addition to the 30 days, a five days is provided. So in total, within the 35 days, the RTI uh, applicant should receive information from the public information officer of the concerned organization. In case the public information officer transfers the information uh, request to another public authority, etc. After receiving the transferred application from the concerned PIO, it is the duty of the second public information officer to provide information. After receiving, it is counted for another 30 days. So in aggregate, we don't know how much time it will take if the application is transferred. But generally within five working days, the concerned public information officer should transfer the application to the next concerned public information officer. If the, the same should be communicated with the RTA applicant and it is the duty of the second public information officer after receiving the uh, RTA request, Within 30 days, it is the duty of him to submit the information to the RTI applicant. In case of human rights violation and uh, corruption is involved, it is within 45 days, but uh, the information has to be provided to the RTI applicant, but with proper approval of the Central Information Commission, the information can be provided for the RTI applicant. Then in case of uh, the life and liberty of a person is involved, in all those cases, it is the duty of the concerned public information officer to provide information within 48 hours from the date of receipt of application from the RTA applicant. So in case if the RTA applicant did not receive information from the public information officer, within 30 days or 45 days or 35 days, if the application is made to the assistant public information officer, the next senior rank officer has, uh, it is the duty of the concerned RTA applicant to refer the case to the, the senior rank officer after the 35 days period of time. Even though after that, if the RTA applicant is not able to receive information from the office of the concerned PIO, then 
within the 90 days after the 90 days period of time the RTA applicant may approach the state information commissioner where a, an appeal has to be made by the concerned RTA applicant then the RTA uh, application may be referred to the state chief information commissioner or the information commissioners where the information commissioner or the state chief information commissioner they may send notices to the concerned public information officer for denying information for the RTA applicant then a case may be heard before the information commissioner and the possible grounds for denying information may be presented by the concerned public information officer or in case the RTA applicant receives information during the period of time, etc., then the same can be communicated by the public information officer to the RTA applicant along with that. The same thing can be forwarded to the state information commission or if it is relevant, uh, if it is to be provided to the central information commission, then the copy should be forwarded by the PIO to the central information commission. Exemptions under the Right to Information Act. So under Section 8 of the Right to Information Act, there are uh, different exemptions which are uh, there in the RTA Act. So in some of these cases, the information disclosure can be restricted by the concerned public information officers of the concerned organizations. The information disclosure which affects or may affect the sovereignty and integrity of the country if it is affecting the relations of the concerned state or the nation with other nations or foreign countries, etc., or any information which which leads to incitement of an offense, etc., all that information disclosure is restricted under the RTA. Act. Any information disclosure of which leads to contempt of court, that information is also exempted under the RTI Act. Any information disclosure of which, if causes the breach of privilege of the parliament or state legislature, etc., that information disclosure is also exempted under the RTA Act. Then the trade secrets information which is received in confidence by the nation, the state, etc. and information relating to intellectual property, etc. That information is also exempted under the RTA Act. Then any information relating to a person, personal information or personal affairs of a concerned person, etc. The information cannot be disclosed under the Right to Information Act, but in the larger public interest, if it is uh, going to help the nation or the public, etc., in the larger public interest, some information relating to the personal life or uh, personal information can be disclosed. Uh, disclosure of any information, if it is going to endanger the life and physical safety of a person, that kind of information cannot be provided to the RTA applicant. Then information which will hinder the process of any investigation, etc. That kind of information is also cannot be provided to the RTA applicant. Then cabinet papers or deliberations relating to the Council of Ministers, etc. or any other officers who are in higher ranks, etc., that kind of information also cannot be disclosed for the RTI applicants. Okay, then the information relating to personal information, as I said, the uh, information which may uh, in leads to the invasion of privacy, etc., that kind of information cannot be disclosed under the Right to Information Act. And the central uh, intelligence and security agencies are excluded from providing information to the RTA applicants.
knowingly or unknowingly generally if a public or if it comes to the penalty which can be imposed on the public information officers of the concerned organizations for denial of information or etc so generally the central information commission so in the first case after making an application to the public information officer within 30 days of time if you have not received you are appealing to the higher officials after that within after the uh, 90 days period of time you are approaching the central information commission or state information commissioner along with uh, writing the letter uh, etc so you are enclosing the copies which you submitted for the public information officer you are appealing uh, the central information commission for providing information from the pib so what happens generally if the public information officer knowingly or unknowingly provides information which is incorrect and misleading information or provides if he refuses to provide information to the rti applicant or provides a destroyed information or uh, information which is not required and the half of the information which is required to provide for the rti applicant you know all these cases are furnishing uh, information which is false in all these cases the, the central information commission or the state information commission may impose a penalty of rupees 250 per day for denying information or providing a destroyed information misleading information to the rti applicant till the rti applicant receives the information from the concerned pio or from the state information commission or the central information commission but the penalty should not uh, exceed uh, 